Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 360 Suite Business Object Solutions webinar today on satisfying regulatory requirements in business objects. And of course, if you've been paying attention to the news or uh, even just uh, preparing yourselves for next week, next Friday, um, you know well that GDPR, HIPAA, solvency, SOX, FISMO, all of these regulations can have impacts on business objects. And yet, uh, complying with those regulations with business objects is generally a known risk. So today we're going to dig into how the 360 suite can help you satisfy those regulatory requirements easily, uh, quickly, and in a lot of ways automated. So let's dive in. My name is Nathan Crook. I'm a director here uh, for a little over three years now with uh, GB and Smith. I've been in the business objects world for over 11 years, formerly uh, worked for business objects and of course in the partner ecosystem since then. And uh, I'm joined by Pauline Lancaster. Hi, this is Pauline. I'm a pre-sales solution engineer with GB and Smith. Um, I have over 10 years of experience with business objects. I was a business objects administrator. Um, prior to joining GB and Smith, I developed universes, reports, and um, did a lot of installs, upgrades, um, so I'm familiar with a lot of the, the challenges. Exactly. And uh, I see a lot of uh, familiar names out in the audience. Um, as you know, we like this to be a um, back and forth, more of a conversation than a tell. Um, so if you look uh, along the right hand in the control panel, um, you may have minimized it to the side. There's a little orange arrow. You can pull it out. There's a section in there called questions. Um, there's also a section in called handouts uh, where you can download some uh, material that is relevant uh, along with the uh, PDF version of the presentation today. Um, but please ask questions as we go through here. We definitely want to make sure that this is valuable information and the only way that happens is if you interact with us. Uh, to help relate it to your specific um, requirements. So, without further ado, uh, the 360 suite. Um, now, like I said, I see a lot of names that are very familiar, so more than likely you understand what you're seeing here. The 360 suite is made up of a number of modules, um, eight to be exact at the moment, and uh, I'm not going to go into each of these right now. But uh, suffice it to say, we're going to dig into a lot of these as we dig through the different regulations and the different ways that um, these solutions can be leveraged to meet the, uh, the, the regulations. We have over 600 clients worldwide, over 3 million end users leveraging the 360 suite today. Uh, so, you know, these are solutions that are rock solid and uh, are, are trusted around the globe. Um, to help manage business objects, and we're just going to show you more around the business cases uh, for meeting compliance regulations today. So, Pauline, why don't we uh, move right into the first poll. So, the topic, of course, is around regulations. So, to start this off, uh, and of course, we'll share the results, which regulatory requirements do you need to meet? So this is a multi-select. You can select any and all of uh, the answers here. So take a moment, fill this in. We'll leave it up for about a minute. Um, about 21%, 26% have voted. Really appreciate everyone taking some time out of the day to join us. Um, and look forward to sharing how uh, how customers are doing this today. Excellent. So we've got a pretty good smattering. Seventy five percent have voted now, and we've got we've got several FISMA, several HIPAA, SOX, GDPR, <laughs> and even some people that don't know or none. Uh, so we've got all across the board joining us today. Keep going. Uh, we're almost to the top of the minute. And uh, we've got 80 percent. All right. So I'm going to close this poll. Okay. Pauline, you so share. share yeah. 
Yeah, we'll share the results. So um, for for those of you on the call, there um, looks like Sox is the uh, most uh, heavily um, re uh, the requirement that you you guys everybody on the call most um, has uh, GDPR. Looks like uh, there's a lot more than than what I would have expected. Um, we had a webinar in Europe earlier today, and I'm sure that was I think that was a lot higher. Um, HIPAA and then and then CISMA as well. And for those of you that don't know or you don't have any requirements, um, I'm sure you probably have internal requirements, maybe some some other requirements. So the content here will definitely be relevant to you as well because you'll get you know, gain some insight as to how the solutions can work for you. Okay. All right. So. We'll start with just um, some commonalities between regulations and meeting those regulations uh, that I think will sound uh, very familiar to most of you out there. Uh, the funny thing is, is that it's actually pretty simple um, to meet the regulations as far as you know what what they want or how to sum up what uh, compliance officers want. However, delivering that information is much more difficult. So. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to the W's, who, what, where, when, and why. So do we, can we protect the data? Can we prove that we're protecting data? Can we prove that users and owners that are protected? Um, ensuring security, backup and disaster recovery, data integrity, data accuracy, proving those, life cycle of sensitive content, and uh, also documenting regulated content. So all of these are gonna to be topics they're gonna to touch on for each of the different regulations um, mentioned in the poll. So why don't we uh, move into that? Okay, so this first is, you know, so why you might ask why is this concern with business objects? Um, we've had some customers tell us, you know, my database is, is compliant, it's box compliant, why does business objects need to be compliant? Um, so, you know, obviously business objects uh, reports on the data from your database um, and which need to be protected, um, it has to be controlled and monitored so you know where it's going. This graphic shows that the data goes everywhere. It gets um, distributed by email, it goes to SharePoint sites, um, users download it, export to Excel. Um, so this, you know, is, there's a heavily a need to control um, who's accessing this data, where it's going, and um, we're going to show you how 360 Suite can be leveraged um, to meet those regulatory needs that you have. Exactly. If your business SAP Business Objects landscape touches a database with sensitive data, more than likely your business objects uh, landscape needs to meet those regulatory requirements by default, as it's going to be the distribution layer for that data. Let's dig in. All right, so the first up is uh, SOX compliance. So this one's been around for quite some time, and I know a lot of companies actually try to keep business objects away from SOX compliance, but at the end of the day, um, reporting on financial information and uh, making a full traceability of that information trail um, in business objects is very tough. So the, the regulatory topics for SOX is access control, backup and disaster recovery, data integrity, and versioning. So, Pauline, why don't you take us through, yeah, these two. Okay, so the first one, we're just gonna show you a few, of, highlight a few of the um, uh, regulations. Um, so, versioning is, is one of uh, uh, the regulatory requirements across several of these regulations. Uh, 360 Suite has a versioning solution. Um, it uh, allows you to, um, it's a version control that allows you to record changes over time, what's changed, um, who's made the changes, make comments on changes. We have a new solution actually that, that's just been released in the past couple months um, that has a workflow process. So you package your, um, your content that you're going to um, make changes to, you package it in a release, and then you promote those releases through the environments. This is all controlled um, with security, who has access to create those packages, who has access to um, build those releases, and who has access to promote them through the environment. Um, so all of this can be controlled. Um, and I'll show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into that um, real quick to show you what that looks like. Um, 
So here is the, um, um, the 360 versioning solution. Um, so here I can go to versioning and I can open packages. And you see I have several packages. I can open any of those. Um, this is all context menu driven. Um, I'll open my package. Here you see I've got two documents, so two webby documents and two universes inside this package. So once you've packaged your content, so um, you, you have a package manager, it can be designated that way, um, and, and then whoever is responsible for making changes can then um, make those changes once they've been, um, so here I can go to my folder where those objects are. So you know, open this folder. Um, these top two you see, these have actually been allocated to another package. I've got a financial report package. If I scroll through, here's my Q2 2018 package. Um, they've been versioned, so by creating a package, they automatically get versioned. Um, if I'm a developer, I would come in here, version, and check out that object. Um, we do have a webby extension, so if this is a webby report. I could actually do the lock-in, the check-in, check-out. Um, from within web intelligence um, for the webby document so that's an option so here you see a lock um, so that object is locked that prevents that puts an access level on top of that so it prevents any changes um, so when you're making changes to a report to a universe you don't want anyone else making changes um, this is a feature that is available in 360 verse that a lot of the other versioning solutions um, don't have, so they don't actually lock the object. So they have the potential where other people are making changes when you really don't want um, more than um, two people making changes to an object. So this locks the object. Once the developer is ready to um, mix it, made the changes, they can check it back in, check in the object. Um, I'm prompted to create a version. So I have to version that. Anytime a change is made, that's one of um, the requirements with versioning. Um, is to actually create those versions. Um, I can you know, make any um, comments, and that again is also a required field. Um, I click OK, and here you can see um, my version. Um, so one of the other nice features with uh, 360 verse is you have the life cycle of an object. So here I can actually audit. I can see what's been changed with this object. Um, so this shows um, the CMS it's in, the, the two versions were created, um, the comment on the object, um, so you can actually see what's been changed, um, and you can say, you know, someone changed, you know, who changed it, what was changed. Uh, you have the ability to compare versions, you can roll back versions. So once I've made my changes, you can then package the releases. So I could go back, um, package the releases, create uh, a, um, the release, and um, so here I can go and um, release, create the new, a new release, um, and that would um, then have the ability then to move that through my environment. Um, so this is a really powerful versioning solution um, and allows you to meet the requirement um, that you have if, if your regulation requires you to, to maintain versions of, um, of objects. Yeah, and for some of you wondering, that's um, that's actually the new UI. So if you haven't seen that before, I'm sure you've probably heard us talking about uh, V2 of the 360 suite. This is the new um, UI5 uh, UI, and uh, it looking pretty pretty sexy, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, we like it. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So next topic okay. is data security. Right. So an, another uh, requirement is to make sure that the information you're um, displaying is consistent and displaying what you should um, be displaying, um, especially with financial information. Um, anytime you make a change to your environment, whether it's an ETL change, database, you're applying a service pack, um, universe change, you change a simple join, um, and you don't expect to have an impact on your reports. Um, you need to, to verify that you haven't made, um, you know, cause regressions on the report. Um, it's very time consuming to do regression testing. 360 Bind is a solution that allows you to automate that regression testing. What you see on the screen here is a, um, a result of a comparison of, um, of reports. So on the left-hand side, that um, shows what the report looked like before the change. The right-hand side is after the change. 
and any differences are highlighted. Um, so you see the, the graphs have red squares on the top that shows where the differences are in those graphs. And at the bottom, it highlights the, the data that are different. Um, this eliminates the risk of, of doing manual testing. Um, you know, it's, it's often prone to error to, you know, due to um, you know, humans um, doing the testing. And I will show you what that looks like um, with 360. So this is currently in the, um, the, the old web app. Um, so I'll show you quickly. So this is 360 bind. Um, allows you to set up your, your testing. Once you've set up your, your regression testing scenarios, you can rerun them um, as needed. So it's automated, um, saves a lot of time. Um, so I am doing a comparison of Webby reports and I, these are matching by CUID. I have all these different options for what I want to compare. So I'm going to compare data, I'll compare the structure and I have graphs on my report. So I'll also compare images. You can even compare execution times. This is um, helpful um, to make sure you're getting similar response times. Um, I submit the comparison. Okay. Um, in this example, I had 13 reports. This shows 10 are matching, three aren't matching. Um, these green dots indicate all the matching reports. And I can switch, uh, click on the red dots to look at the reports that aren't matching. Uh, so left-hand side would be my uh, report before the service pack update, right hand side is after the service pack update, and scrolling through, I uh, see any, where there are changes. So they're highlighted in red. I immediately see where the differences are. Um, this can all be sent to you by email. You can get just the differences sent to you. Um, it's a really powerful, powerful tool. Here's an example of um, what I had shown you with the graph. So it shows you where the differences are, you know, eliminates the human error, and allows you to automate your regression testing so you can make changes um, and be confident that you're not um, displaying information that, that's not accurate. You know, one of the things that I wanted to pull out of this while we we're talking on SOX compliance is, um, you know, the fact that you need to keep seven years worth of backup information for um, SOX compliance of uh, instances and reports, et cetera. And so, you know, the, we're going to actually dig into um, the the archiving here in just a moment, but uh, I wanted to pull it out because I see a lot of people here with SOX compliance on their mind, and um, one of the one of the key solutions that we've been using for uh, many clients in this scenario is that uh, you know keeping seven years worth of information inside of business objects can be a really tough task. Um, with space and just, uh, you know, functionality, everything, uh, performance, you know, things working like they should when you've got that much data and information in there. And so, you know, archiving or pseudo archiving that kind of information, making that easy, uh, we'll dig into the technicality and how that's working, but uh, that's something that we definitely address uh, for those of you with SOX compliance on your mind. So next is FISMA. Uh, this is uh, one of the most arduous set of regulations out there today. This is public sector focused, um, the executive branch. This is something that uh, I see that a couple of you um, are, are dealing with FISMA compliance. And so the key BI regulatory topics that we are helping our customers with here are access control, the backup and disaster recovery, uh, data integrity and account recertification. And so for this one, we're going to pull out uh, account recertification and the backup and disaster recovery to dig in deeper. Pauline? Right. So the first one we were going to discuss was the account recertification. Um, so I, I don't know if this is a requirement of yours. How frequently do you actually do the account recertification? So this involves disabling any accounts that are no longer required. Maybe the user has been terminated or transferred to another department and they should no longer be a, a user in business objects. Um, maybe you only do this once a year. Um, you know, is that really frequent enough? We actually have a federal customer that uses a um, several solutions in the 360 suite um, to confirm that anyone that's in business objects is should remain should be in business objects, and they, they run this account recertification process daily. Um, so they have an automated process that validates the users have the appropriate access, so they use um, 
another system and do a comparison um, um, through the database um, to determine you know, whether that access is appropriate or not. Um, that alerts, that triggers a report that's delivered if there are any discrepancies. And then actions can be taken. So if that user needs to be removed, disabled, whatever um, is appropriate, maybe they're just in the wrong group. Um, so it also checks to make sure that they're whatever active directory group they're in, they're in the right group within business objects. Um, so all of that is done on, on a daily basis. So they're always ensure that their um, account uh, their certification is they're meeting that, that need. Okay. Before we get into the uh, the next um, the disaster recovery, we're going to have a poll. Right. So, how often do you test your disaster recovery plan? So, it should pop up on your screen here. Um, this one is uh, just pick one. So, um, of the people here, do you have a disaster recovery plan? If so, how often do you test it? Is it mandatory? Those kinds of questions. All right. Actually making good progress. 60% in. Wow. Almost half of the people never have to test. This is crazy. Or never do test, I guess. I was going to distinguish that. It might not be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never do. All right. So we're up on a minute. I'm going to close this poll. Okay. And we can share. Yeah, we'll share those results. So it looks like. Majority, um, actually, the majority never never test their disaster recovery plan if they even have one, um, and 40% do that once a year. Um, okay, uh, interesting. Um, yeah, if you so never actually, if you never test uh, or never test your disaster recovery plan, I'm interested in the questions answer the questions box. Do you not have to, or is it just uh, something that doesn't have a, a big enough priority to get done or, you know, I, I'm, sh I'm wondering what the distinction is, is if it never has to happen or if it's just hard to find time to do it. Anyways, go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, so I actually worked um, for, uh, for a customer, a federal customer, and they had a disaster recovery. Um, they would do a, a, a um, simulation once a year but they always left business objects out of it because they decided it was too complicated. Um, and they just decided they weren't gonna spend the time to actually test it. So everything else got tested, but business objects. Um, and it, it, it can be complicated. So the traditional um, backup, um, you back up your CMS repository, you back up your file store, and then you restore that to another environment. Um, and there's a lot of pointers to the source system and, and it can be a little tricky to get that set up. Um, and, you know, the, um, the, the requirement or at least this regulation is um, you have to have the ability to restore um, the available, um, the personal data in a timely manner in the event that there is a, um, a disaster. Uh, 360 plus gives you the ability to uh, back up all of your content. Um, then uh, the first time it backs up, it, it does a full backup. The subsequent backups are incremental, um, so it just backs up the differences. Uh, a lot of nice features with that. You can actually compare um, versions. You can compare a backup from a month ago to what it looks like now. So whether it's a, a web report or a universe, um, you can do that comparison so that you know what you're restoring. Um, if, if a folder is deleted um, or a universe gets corrupted, you're not going to go through the process of doing that full um, uh, re uh, restore if you have the file system in the, um, in the repository. Um, 360 Plus simplifies that. It gives you a very easy a web interface to do that restoration. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer. You, you just uh, roll it back. Um, some of our customers will say, well, we have the recycle bin, so it's not really a concern anymore. And, and you know, SAP has provided a recycle bin. Um, it doesn't include users, so if a user gets deleted, that content is deleted, all their personal folder content, um, 360 um, plus will, will also back up that 
user folder and so you can restore their content as well. Um, so it definitely meets the requirement. Uh, we have customers that have to have a DR site readily available. Um, actually, some of a financial customer they use 360 to do their daily backups, but they also have a daily restore to their DR site. And they, I think it's monthly, they actually roll over. They must not be on the call because they didn't, um, no one answered that they do a, a regular, regular um, DR uh, simulation, but they have, they roll over, they um, test it for about an hour or two, and then they roll back. Um, so they have uh, uh, used our solution. Um, to uh, meet that regula regulatory need to have a DR site readily available. Okay. All right, so next up, healthcare, good old HIPAA. So, uh, you know, protecting patient data information, personal information, how it's handled, uh, including exchanging information between healthcare providers, all of this is wrapped up into some uh, similar topics here, access control, backup and disaster recovery, traceability, encryption, archiving. These are the uh, topics we wanna pull from here is how do we ensure document security and access control? And then also the archiving instances that I mentioned before. You know, Pauline, why don't you uh, take us through those? Okay, so here's just something that I had um, found about um, uh, healthcare records. So um, just in, in quarter one of, of 2018, 1.13 million records have been um, exposed by, there were 10, 110 data breaches um, with healthcare records. This was, uh, ThinkStock was the source of this. Um, and it just, this kind of compounds what the what the um, risk of, of um, having, you know, records, uh, um, data breaches with records. Um, here are some examples of the 2017 HIPAA violation. So there's really huge penalties um, if, if a breach is, is, um, is uh, reached. Um, so here's an example of a healthcare system that had a $5.5 million um, violation um, because of um, insufficient access controls. Um, and another example of a provider that um, didn't have the security management process um, in place, and they had a four hundred thousand um, dollar violation. Um, and these are just a, a few examples. There are very, there are many. Um, so it's very important to make sure that you know if you're handling healthcare records and patient information, that you have the right security in place. Um, so 360 uh, view gives you the ability to ensure that you have the security in place, and um, gives you the ability to document that security. Um, so this, what you're seeing right here on the screen is a security matrix. Um, it allows you to uh, view the security, what's been applied on universes, on folders. You know, you, you have a folder that has patient information. You want to know who has access to that. You can answer that question. You can document that, um, and you can immediately see what, what right has been explicitly granted, um, what rights have been inherited. Um, typically, you want to grant the rights at the group level. Sometimes you see that rights get granted at the, at the user level, which is probably against um, against your security policies. Um, you can see that immediately um, with 360 View. Uh, some of the the other needs is to be able to see, you know, how has security changed over time. Um, actually, with a combination of 360 View and Eyes, you can see, you know, the granular level rights. What's changed? What did it look like a month ago? Um, uh, you can restore security. So if, if you do have that backup, if, if something changed all of a sudden, um, you know, everyone has access to this folder that has patient information and, and they're not supposed to, you can roll back um, that folder security so that it, it's um, applied what, what it was applied previously. Um, and so 360 view does give you the ability to ensure that you have the right security in place. And if you need to um, audit that security, you can do that very easily and, and document it with, um, with 360 view. Okay, and one of the other needs is archiving. Um, so I think it was with SOX that Nathan, Nathan mentioned, um, so instances need to be maintained for seven years. That's the same case with, with HIPAA is my understanding. Um, this is a challenge with a lot of our customers because it, it you know, you have so many instances, it increases the backup, um, the space that you need for backups, the, the size of your repository, how long it takes for upgrades. 
Um, so we actually implemented a solution for one of our customers that needed to, um, wanted those instances out of their business objects environment. Um, so they they had a requirement to keep them, but they didn't want them to. They didn't need to remain in that in the business objects environment. So with with 360 View, they have the ability to archive those, which is actually removing them. It's extracting them, um, putting them in a network location, a folder, um, a NAS, a SAN, um, wherever they designate. Um, it takes those PDFs, Excel, whatever um, export you, your instance is in, and puts it in a file system. Um, it, it is labeled so that you can easily find the, the, the instance. So it's labeled by the title, by the date, by the owner. Um, and it gets that, those instances out of your environment um, so that, but they're still stored in locations that you're still um, meeting that regulation that you need to have seven years worth of instances. Okay. Really interesting, Pauline. Um, this group has been super quiet. Now I know they're on mute, but uh, <laughs> we've really only had <laughs> two questions. Um, so hopefully you're getting your questions asked here or answered here. But um, make sure if you want to ask questions, it's in the uh, it's in the go to webinar control panel. Um, easily findable. So next topic, GDPR. So protecting EU residents' data, you know, the funny thing about this is, is that it really affects you a lot of U.S. companies as well. If you have even one EU resident in your uh, data, you are, com you need to be compliant with GDPR. And so several of the key BI regulatory topics here are access control again. Uh, backup and disaster recovery, it's a common theme. Data integrity, transparency, right of erasure, and the flagging of EU resident content. So uh, for this, Pauline, I want you, oh, it's time for poll three. That's right. Let's uh, launch poll number three. Polls are my favorite. We get insight to folks attending. All right, so do you? Have personal data affected by GDPR in business objects? Um, yes, no, don't know. Um, all legitimate answers, but I hope if it's yes, you do know. <laughs> all right, 70%. People are on it this time. That's awesome. Uh, 30 more seconds here. So this GDPR, of course, I think I mentioned at the top, goes into effect on May 25th, next Friday. So I hope if your answer is yes, you're prepared. But if not, um, you know, definitely talk with us. Um, we've got some really interesting ways of being able to, to support um, business object customers here. All right. So that's right at a minute. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll and share the results. Okay, so it looks like we've got 44% they do have, um, that's higher than I thought, that do have GDPR um, uh, personal data affected by GDPR, so in their business objects environment, um, and 31% no. So, um, that's a lot higher than, than I would have thought, but um, good to know. Uh, so we will um, move on then and show you what uh, what you can um, leverage with the uh, 360 Suite. So 360 Univ is one of our, our newest solutions, and this actually is, is the only client tool we have. It will export all the content of your universes, um, so export to Excel, and then you can do bulk updates. Uh, so in this example, um, we're showing you how you can, so this is a, a spreadsheet of, of um, uh, content from a universe. Um, you locate your dimensions that have that personal information um, and then you tag it. So um, you can identify, you know, whatever tags you, you deem are appropriate. Um, this one, they um, added GDPR sensitive, GDPR five years, GDPR seven years. So whatever makes sense to you to flag that content, um, you make the changes, save them, re-import them. That'll update your uh, universes in bulk. Um, and then once you've done that, um, 360i extracts all the metadata um, 
from your universes, from your reports, including what you tagged. Um, it allows you to create reports that answer questions about where that data is stored. Um, so, you know, where where is that information, the GDPR data, uh, or that data that's um, subject to GDPR? Where is that? And where, what university is it in? What reports is it in? Where are those reports going? Who's running them? Um, where's that data saved? Where is it sent? Um, you can get all that information. Um, and this is a, a solution that, that we've worked with customers um, to be able to uh, to meet this this new um, regulation that's, uh, as Nathan said, coming um, uh, coming next Friday. Fast and furious. Yep. All right. So I posted a, a link also for uh, this particular um, paper. So we just released this business objects in the era of GDPR. Um, the the handout is uh, attached in handouts, and then I also added a link in the chat. So there again, it's in the go to webinar control panel um, to the business objects risk regulations. Um, so definitely take advantage. Um, you know, I won't go through each and all of these because uh, we've been digging into these topics along the way, but uh, definitely good stuff for that uh, fifty percent. Who are dealing with uh, GDPR regulations? Okay, so some upcoming webinars that we have. Um, so at the end of this month, we're going to have a webinar with SAP. I think this one um, people will find really interesting. Um, is becoming a visualization guru with Webby. So um, we'll actually have the Webby. Um, uh, someone from from SAP um, showing us how you can actually use Webby to to develop. I mean, it can be like it'll um, can you can develop dashboard like um, reports with Webby. Um, so they've really enhanced it. Um, and if, if those of you don't don't know how how that's um, possible, this might be of interest to you. So look for that. Um, I think Nathan's going to put a, a registration uh, link um, also put in the it chat. In Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, and then on the 13th, we will be discussing business objects, load testing and sizing, um, how, how you can do sizing and performance with business objects. So with, with 360, um, this is with 360 cast with um, our newest solution, 360 live with monitoring and um, also using um, JMeter, which is a, a free load, load testing software, how those can be leverage to do performance testing and load testing. Um, so hopefully that'll be of interest and we recently published a white paper on that topic as well. And then in July, we will dig more into it. So we showed you the versioning, but um, there's obviously a lot to it, um, the whole workflow. And so we will, in July, we'll show more of our business objects um, versioning with, with 360 verse. Indeed. So of course, Sapphire now is an ASUG annual conference is coming up in June, and I will be there along with uh, Bruno and Sebastian and the 360 Suite team. And uh, we are hosting an event while we're there and would love for you to at um, attend. So good chance to meet other customers in the 360 universe, um, as well as, uh, you know, if, if you aren't a customer, just interested in um, meeting business objects, folks, we, we've got people that love to share and uh, it'd be great to see you there. So let us know in the questions if uh, if indeed you are going to be attending. And then finally, Webby for me. So this is not about a three, not about the 360 suite. This is about Webby. Uh, we are huge fans of Webby at uh, 360 suite at GV and Smith and uh, we're sh sharing the stoke around uh, why people should be still uh, leveraging and growing their web intelligence landscape, as well as for all people all around the world to uh, have a community and uh, sort of reminiscent of Bob uh, back in the day, which of course is still kicking around, but this is uh, you know in LinkedIn and something that people leverage on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, make sure that you sign up. I, I put a, uh, a link to the group into the uh, group chat for everyone to see. So uh, feel free to connect in through there. And then Pauline, 
I think that's about it. Thank you so much for attending. Um, Adam, I'll follow up with you uh, because that's quite a topic uh, that you posted there um, individually and look forward to that conversation and truly appreciate everyone's uh, attention and uh, uh, participation in the in the event today. And, and please let us know if uh, we can be of service to you. A uh, free trial is available for anyone who wants to uh, look in deeper to how the 360 suite can uh, be leveraged in your environment and we'd be happy to help you there. So I don't see any more questions being asked. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Merci. Thanks. Thank you, Bye. Bye-bye.